Hello YouTubers, right, um, this uh, is the first in my series of my basics video on how I built my fully analog synthesizer. Now this first part of what I'm going to try and do as best as I can in as simplest language as I can is just to explain what parts you would need and how to go about putting it together. Now the first thing you're going to need is a power supply. Now what I've had to do in the, when I first started was you use two 9 volt batteries. So what we have is one battery plus, and these are 9 volt batteries by the way. So we have another one 9 volt battery and another 9 volt battery. And what we will do, we have the positive terminal and the negative terminal. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with um, 9 volt battery connections that you would normally find in electronics. You can find them in things like some toys or you could find them in smoke alarms, things like that. They have like a connector. So what you will need to do, first of all, is have one con find a connector with the correct terminals terminal connections so now what you do is you take one to the positive and one to the negative and there you have your zero volts or your ground now this is one of the simplest and cheapest ways to get a bipolar supply for experimenting when you've kind of got a bit more into it you may decide well actually I want to go for um, actually a proper power supply supplied by the mains dual power supply so what we do here we have our minus 9 volts and then from this side we'll have our plus 9 volts so what we have here on our these triangles are the op amps now these are from my first setup which I used a TL 074 which is a quad op amp so actually inside here we have four of these two of the pins which is pin I think you'll find it is pin 4 goes to the plus rail the plus power supply and pin 11 will go to the neg negative supply and basically they'll be opposite each other opposite each other right on the middle of that power supply now what I have here is a very small parts list so I'm just hoping you will take note of that that's the parts list of what I used I'm sure there's many people out there screaming saying why are you using those parts but they worked for me and they work quite well they're very cheap and obtainable not hard to get hold of. I mean, I've, I've got a lot of stuff from um, Maplin's Electronics in the UK and some stuff I've just got from various people I've kind of got in contact with for some kind of more sort of rarer and some actually obsolete parts from people who've just had surplus electronics, etc. So it's worth hunt, having a hunt around for that. Maybe even, um, yeah, put an advert out and see if anybody's got bits lying around. You never know. Um, so, yeah, so basically all you need is one TL074 quad op amp. The reason why I used the quad op amp was because it just meant I could save space on my breadboards from when I actually made the, made the main saw core. And also what we have is... Um, 122k resistor, 200k resistors, one capacitor, which I put a question mark because this is kind of going to be a choice um, component depending on the frequency, um, the frequency range you want to achieve. So it can vary depending on your value of capacitor. Now, choice of capacitors, I would say either go for the yellow polystyrene, I think they're polystyrene film capacitors, or alternatively, you could go for 
the blue ceramic capacitors which I have in this bag. I'm trying to do this a bit one-handed, so please bear with me. And they, again, these come in various values. So, right, let's see if we can get the camera to focus on that. No, not quite. Anyway, let's move on. So, what I'm going to do is quickly draw you how we connect all these parts together. Right, so first of all, we in our quad op amps, we're gonna, I'm going to call this pin 1, I'm going to call this pin 3, and this will be pin 2, this will be pin 5, pin 6, and pin 7. So pin 1 and pin 2 are the output pins. Now, the first thing you need to do is, before I go on any further, is actually find a way of connecting everything. So if you are doing this on the breadboard, or you maybe you want this to be adventurous and, and dive straight in and solder this up you're going to need some cable what I used for the breadboard was this cable here which is basically like telephone cable or you can use cat5 or cat6 cable which comes in a big part like this if you strip it apart you get four strands in there very cheap per meter again inexpensive so that's what I have used and basically stripped the ends and used different colors so you kind of as, a, as my rule, I used blue as my negative supply connections and orange as my positive supply connections. So anyway, without further ado, let's just draw the first connection in. So the first thing what we'll do is we'll put our resistor in, 47K resistor, and that will go from the non-inverting side of the of the first op amp to the output and on pin 2 we'll take two resistors sorry about my uh, drawing there and one will go to the plus voltage one will go to the minus voltage and this will create a voltage divider now from that pin 2 what I'm going to do is when I make connections, I will put a small circle. Any line which goes straight through is not a connection, so please take note of that. So we'll come out of pin 5 and connect pin 5 into pin 2. So there, I should have written the values in, so we'll have 100k and on the other side 100k as well. Both 100 kilo ohm resistors. 100 right okay so now from between pin 7 and pin 3 I'm going to try and squeeze this in somehow we need to take a 22k resistor so that's about the closest you'll get half the value of 47k you can do this so this resistor here is 47k and this one is 100 so as long as this is literally double about half should I say half the value of the 47k you should be good so that will be our 22k resistor there now for our next part we're pretty much there as far as the parts are concerned you can see we have this 1 times 22 we have we've only used so that's we'll call that op amp A and op amp B we have C and D still which will come later on the wave shaping um, because basically this is the saw core of the oscillator now at the moment was one component missing which we is the capacitor so the capacitor C1 will go right here between 6 and 7 right so at the moment we actually have a working oscillator and from this here point pin 1 we have a square output stroke a pulse and from this we have a triangle wave now if we connect pin 1 and pin 6 to a potentiometer we will actually and we can actually take a output cable and test if we have a square and a triangle well, you will notice the square output is a lot higher in volume than the triangle output what we also need to do now is take the diode which is the 
one N four one N four double zero seven and depending on which way you have this diode which will determine the direction of your saw you will either have a ramp up or ramp down if you turn this in reverse so we'll take that and then we'll connect that to pin 1 now pin 7 we will have a saw out and pin 1 we will have now have a very narrow pulse output so it's quite useless to be honest with you but now we have our saw core so basically what I think what we have done is crossed over the, this, the pulse out square with the triangle wave which has given us a saw but you will notice that the frequency will be higher so it's kind of double the frequency of what our frequency not exactly bang on but quite quite close to being double the frequency and that is basically it so we'll have from our op amps again, like I'm just going to remind you, if we're using a dual op amp, say for instance something like the LM358 or the TL072, which are dual op amps, you will need to connect pin 4 and pin 8 respectively. Please look up the data sheets if you're very unclear of um, what are the pinouts because that will help you a lot if even if you just have a quick sketch down on a bit of paper or maybe do yourself a print out and do yourself a little handbook of all these sort of different op amps and ICs to sort of give you a bit of a head start while you're actually before you sort of dive in because you can end up making wrong connections and give yourself a bit of a headache or why things are not working so there we are there we have it which is our saw core now again this will still work if we put the um we put a connection between a between a potentiometer from pin six from pin six and pin one. So if we connect that and then we can check the tuning range. This capacitor here, when I first built the uh, oscillator. I used a 104 which is about 0 0.1 microfarads and you get quite a good range but not a very not a very high range now to this at the moment is just an oscillator it is not a VCO in the next tutorial I will try my best to show you how we go about um, building the exponential converter which is actually borrowed from a very sort of old and very kind of well-known um, Roland topology, which is used in, even in the DCO synths, part of it is used in, in there. So, yeah, so we have our, our bipolar power supply there. Again, we connect the two positive and negative together, we'll give us zero volts, and this will give us plus nine, and we have minus nine to power these dual op amps. Okay, well, thank you for watching, people. And I, if there's any questions that you need to ask, please leave them in the comments and I'll try and do my best to answer them. Anyway, I will hopefully see you guys soon. Thanks. Speak soon. Bye-bye.